What's up everybody? Craig Lieberman coming back at you. Today we're talking about the new Nismo 400Z. So like some bald headed guy said, let's go for a little ride. I wake up every minute with the fever dreams. I push a mind to a limit where it needs to be. I work like I got vision I don't need to see. I'm picking mind over matter, I believe in me. I need to find more hours in the day to breathe. Need to find more power in the way I be. And when my mind turns out with the painful scenes, I need to scream out loud, I can't stop me. I want to be the greatest like Rocky. You know I leave them all hate like a hobby. I'm out here making moves like a lobby. And if you ain't with me, it's you I see. I got my mind on the facts, I'm a python. Grab what I like real fast, took until I have everything I attack. Everything that I lack, everything that I want, and I see matter of fact. We'll get to that right after this commercial message from my sponsor. Have you ever thought, why is my wireless bill so expensive? Well, now you can do something about that. So I wanna tell you about Mint Mobile with whom I'm partnering for today's video. Now you've probably heard about Mint Mobile already. Maybe you've seen the hilarious ads from Ryan Reynolds, who by chance is also an owner of Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's service is awesome. For starters, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15, and you don't have to sacrifice coverage, speed, or even data. They're also built on the nation's largest 5G network, which is fantastic. How do they do it? It's real easy. They keep their costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores and the salespeople and everybody wins. Switching to Mint is super easy too. The whole process only takes 15 minutes and if you get stuck, Mint has a great customer service team to help you through it. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. So if you wanna get great wireless service at a great price from a great company, visit my link, mintmobile.com slash Craig or click the link in my description right below the video. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text plus lightning fast 5g and a free mobile hotspot mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as just two lines so what are you waiting for get hooked up with mint mobile today I think uh, most of you know that I'm a Datsun slash Nissan file. I've had several Datsuns during my life, including three Datsun 240Zs, one 260Z, two Datsun 510s, and uh, an R34 GTR, and of course, the R35 GTR. So I'm pretty happy with that brand. I've loved, loved every one of those cars, still do too today. But admittedly, I parted ways with the Datsun Z platform when the Datsun 280ZX was introduced. For me, it was too bulky and laden with luxury accoutrements that I just didn't want back then. And then when the 300ZX came out and what was it, 84, 85, it was even worse. It was more like a GT car. That's not what I wanted. By the time I got interested back in the Z again, that was, we were talking about the Z32, but by that time I was already in the Supers. But I've always thought that the 350Z was a great car for tuner enthusiasts. And when Nissan released the 400Z, I think everybody wondered if they were going to make a Nismo version. Well, we got our, our answer quite a while ago, but it seemed like it took a long, long time from then to announce that. So I think the pandemic might have something to do with that. But honestly, Nissan was slow to release info on the Nismo Z because all Japanese car companies suffer from what I call analysis paralysis. Should we, should we not? But when they do commit, they still like to play their cards close to their vest. This is why we don't have any real official information on the successor of the R35 GT. All we see is bullshit Photoshop renditions from people in, the, in Eastern Europe. But the wait for the Nismo 400Z is over, and for what I see, it was worth the wait. I'll start with the exterior. The headlights lo look like upper and lower eyelids to me. Nissan says they were supposed to kind of resemble the round headlights of the 1970s Datsun Zs. And if you look at it at the right angle, they do that. But from any other angle, it looks just odd. Actually, I'm not gonna say odd, I'm gonna say cartoonish. And of all I can think about of when I look at them is the Miata owners who have this love affair with their cute headlights. One can go up, one can go down, down. they put eyebrows on them. It doesn't help the Nismo look 
look aggressive. It, in fact, it goes the opposite way. But maybe a body kick can fix that. The hexagon roll is a very luxurious touch, very Audi-like, but I wonder how that piano black grill will hold up after a few track days because you should be pitted to hell because how do you put clear wrap on it to protect that? I think it's gonna be a pain in the butt to do it if it's even possible. So maybe some people are gonna start looking for 1970s bras like they used to put on cars. The tail lights are also influenced by the 1970s Z. I expect it no less. They're not terrible, but they don't make me stand up and cheer like the first time I saw the Dodge Challengers of a trunk wide LED lights, it was badass. It's, I still think it's the best thing they ever did with that car. The rear diffuser and a three piece wing show that Nissan was kind of you know, paying attention to everything. Do you want to make the car look good? You know, because it looks, make it look sporty. If you're going to drive it around daily, it's all cool, but you can still do com commutes. You don't have to have a giant wing in the back. And on the weekends, you just slap on some sticky tires and go to the track and run laps all day. So the attention to the aero package, and there's f multiple things, including little over fender trims that demonstrate that Nismo was paying attention to the uh, aerodynamics, and it's not just a pretty face. Let's move on to the interior. In my opinion, the interior is superb. It seems to take cues from uh, Porsche, along with a mix of some of the uh, legacy parts from the Nissan 350Z and 370Z. The seats are also very nice, and again, aimed at the weekend track rat crowd, but not so much overboard that you couldn't drive it to work. With touches of Alcantara and leather, the interior will surprise many, including people like me who bought a GTR and didn't get any of that stuff when we bought our cars seven or eight years ago. So, does the Nismo 400Z have the power to match its styling? Let's look at the specs. It uses the same VR30 TT engine from the Infiniti Q50, but in the Nismo, it makes 420 horsepower and 384 pound foot of torque. That's 20 more horsepower and 34 more pound of feet of torque than the Q50. How do they do that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Nissan got the extra power from pumping up the turbo boost. Looks like just like any tuner does, right? So ramping up the turbine speed, uh, an extra 5,000 RPM did the trick, and that's where the power came from. <laughs> and wait till we get home, we're gonna add them another five PSI, right? Right, everybody? Psst, maybe not. How do they do that? Basically, they used a more precise waste control along with a cylinder-specific spark timing system inspired by the GTR and a new engine computer in order to make it all work. So a little electronic trickery and a little more spin in the turbo up like we all do, right? Good news, you can have any transmission you want as long as it's the line speed automatic transmission. Yep, no manual transmission. Okay. <laughs> Nissan says that the automatic shifts faster up or down than any manual gearbox. True. Who cares? But this is not going to please the, the heel and toe road racing crowd, right? But let's look at the bright side. Drivers can use the paddles or let the automatic transmission handle all of the upships and the downships, and it has automatic rev matching, whether you're using the paddles or whether you're just leaving it in the automatic uh, setting. So but it's not terrible. And if it makes your car faster, zero to 60, which everybody wants that because you gotta play the stoplight Grand Prix. So to harness all this power, not to worry, Nissan paid attention with uh, some supporting mods. Nissan will use the mechanical limited slip differential that is already being used on the Z performance package. A revised, more aggressive launch control will be possible now because of uh, some upgrades to the transmission. That's a good thing. Nissan is also quick to mention that their research showed that for Z buyers, they were really focused on better zero to 60 times. They just didn't feel like it was up to the competition. With all these modifications, the Nismo 400Z gets to 60 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds, which is fantastic. Partially, again, because you don't have to shift manually. The Nismo Z's nine-speed automatic transmission helped it to get to 60 miles per hour, 0.6 seconds faster than the manual 400Z. And of course, the extra horsepower that helps that do. No claims about the quarter mile times, but doing some back of a cocktail napkin math and weight uh, horsepower calculation, you're probably looking at about 
12.7 seconds at about maybe 107, 100 miles per hour. On a road course, Nissan says you're gonna get quicker laps because the Nismo's sophisticated automatic transmission shifts so fast. And in fact, they say it's, it's in half of the time of the of shifting of the other 400Zs. And of course, since it's a Nismo, Nissan knows that a good portion of buyers will want to have some track fun. Makes sense, right? Most people do. To that end though, Nissan got really serious. Nissan added 15 inch front brakes with Akimono brake calipers fitted with track pads that are at full, all four corners. I think that proves that Nismo is serious about performance. Modifications included a bolstered bracing in the front, the rear, and under the rear floor. Going one further, they also added uh, additional welds, adhesives, and foam in strategic places. Everybody does this. If you take a look at a Toyota camera, they do about 2,000 seam welds, and they, when you do it, uh, then when they build a basically identical ES350 from Lexus, they do 4,000 seam welds. So all of that stiffens the chassis. So Nissan said that the chassis stiffening is good for a modest 2.5% increase in torsional rigidity. So what's the downside? The car now weighs 3,704 pounds, which is 102 pounds heavier than the fattest Z already in production and 218 pounds heavier than the lightest model of Z being produced. Trade-off. But the added chassis bracing shows that Nismo understood that buyers will absolutely use their car on the track. And they're gonna be expecting a lot from the, uh, this car on the track, especially now that the Supra's out and there's got a lot of data from the Supra and they're setting records and all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be a, a fierce competition. Going one further again, the Nismo Z comes with Dunlop SP Sport Max GT 600 tires, tires that are very fit similar to what comes on the Nissan GT R. R 35. So they're looking for performance advantages in every part of the vehicle. And I think they've done a pretty good job. Now I wanna get my behind the wheel, but I'll wait for that another time. Prices will probably start about 60,000 bucks before dealer markups. And there will be five colors available. The five colors are black diamond pearl, color number two, brilliant silver, which I call primer gray. Why don't you just primer your car? No imagination, I'm sorry. Passion red tricoat, if you wanna match your girlfriend's fingernails, that might be a good one. What do you think, what do you think, huh? Everest white pearl, that's not a color. That means you ran out of color. <laughs> Everybody's gonna wrap those cars. All in all, the, these Mo's of 400Zs is a great compromise. It can be a daily driver and a competent track toy. My verdict, I think this is one of the last true sports car that you can buy today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe so you can get notified when my new videos drop. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you next time.